Hello, hello. My name is Madeline Hewitt. Welcome to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. So as you know, I like to talk about all things health, wellness, and personal development here. And this year specifically, 2023, I am on an intense deep dive into personal development. I really, really want this year to be all about me finding my purpose, going after my purpose and living my absolute best life. So today I want to talk about my 2023 goals with you all. So since I got out of college about four years ago, I feel like I have just kind of been aimlessly wandering around through life, right? And it's a weird thing because growing up, it was like college was my goal, right? I had, I worked so hard in school to get the grades that I wanted, to be able to go to the school that I wanted. I got in early acceptance to University of Georgia and it felt like I had like accomplished that goal. That was the goal, go to college, get into a good college, da 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 da. I did that. Then college came and it was kind of like the first time in my life that I really had that like sense of freedom and my devotion to school, I would say kind of fell a little bit to the side to my social life. I became super, super into and involved in my friend group and just cultivating relationships. I had never really had that before in my life. I didn't grow up with a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of friends in school. Um, I really never had a best friend, I would say, until college. So all of that just kind of consumed me. I was like super in love with the life that I was building, more so like the people that were in my life. And those are still the people that are my best friends to this day. But that kind of became my whole life for those four years in college. And it kind of sucked because in turn, my bigger picture thought process kind of fell to the wayside, right? So I stopped kind of thinking about what I wanted to do with my life. I stopped kind of focusing on what's next in like the grand scheme of things for my life. I was just focused very much so on like the here and now in college. And then I graduated and then it was like, oh shit. <laughs> I have to get a job. I have to like start to build a life for myself. And it wasn't like I was ill-equipped. I'm a very smart girl. I'm a very resourceful girl. I, you know, still had good grades in college. Don't get me wrong. They just weren't, you know, top of my class like I was in high school. So all of these things come together and I'm like, I don't have any actual idea what I want to do with my life. Even when it came to choosing my major in college, I was just like, um, I really have no idea what I want to do. So I'm going to choose marketing because it's what everyone seems to be choosing. And it means that I get to go to the Terry College of Business at the University of Georgia, which is what everyone told me was like, ah, such a cool thing to do. And I get to get a business degree, but it's not too specific that I'll be like nailed down to one industry. So I'm going to go with marketing. Even though I really had no passion for marketing at the time, and I really didn't know what I had a passion for at the time. So it worked, right? I got my degree. I liked the work that I was doing in college. Like I liked the schoolwork, but definitely wasn't like my passion. So fast forward to post-college and I, in those years since I got out of college, I feel like I have tried a, so many different things and just trying to figure out like what I like and what I don't like. So there were like quite a few years there where I really just had no idea what I was doing. I was working for my family's company and it was good because I was making good money and I was allowed to wear a lot of different hats in the company. And so I did get exposure to a lot of different types of roles, which was really good for me because I did figure out that I, when it comes to corporate type work, I have a knack for operations and strategy. I didn't know that before. I don't know how I would have figured that out in college, but that's what that job afforded me. It afforded me the ability to try a bunch of different things and see what I liked and what I didn't like. And operations and strategy ended up being the path, corporately speaking, the path that I was most intrigued by. So that was a positive. But I knew that I wasn't doing work that I was passionate about. I knew that the company itself was not what I was passionate about at 
all. So even though like the day-to-day -day work wasn't terrible and like I did enjoy the types of projects I was working on and the type of team environment I was working on and um, the analytical data-driven side that I was working on, I did enjoy all of that. But the mission and the purpose of the company that I was working for it didn't align with me and it kind of ended up towards the end pushing me into this like very lost space because it just kind of felt like so what am i doing with this and then that leads us to this past year 2022 dun, dun, dun. okay if you have been watching any of my videos up until now i think that i've hinted pretty clearly at the fact that 2022 was not my year at all I was so lost last year. I feel like I had to go through last year because going through last year, I think is what showed me what my purpose was, right? I was in a really bad place last year. I was so lost. I was not taking care of myself physically, mentally, emotionally. I was in a relationship that just was not serving me. I My career was just kind of plateauing at like a never ending pace. It was just nothing really new was happening. I just, I think I needed last year though, because I don't, if last year had not happened, I don't think I would have figured out. I don't think I would have figured out the person that is sitting in front of you right now. So historically speaking, I am a goal gatekeeper. I have never been one to share my goals. I have never been one to just openly speak about what I want to do with my life, or these are the things that I wanna try, or maybe I should go down this route. I tend to keep those things like very close to my chest. Honestly, I would say the only person that I have ever really been open and divulged kind of all of my different ideas because I have a million and one ideas that come through my head all the time. And the only person that ever really gets to hear those ideas would be my mom. And because my mom feels like such a safe space, like she just lets me tell her every single idea I ever, ever have. And she is so supportive of every single idea I ever have. And I think it's because my mom one, just thinks that I hang the moon, and two, she believes in me so deeply that she makes me feel so comfortable. And so she's probably the only person that I have ever been like, I think I wanna try this, or what if I do this, or tell me what you think about this idea. Like, she's really the only person that I've ever done that with. So I am a huge goal gatekeeper, and this year, 2023, I am breaking the mold. I am about to share with you my five biggest goals for this year. And it's really scary because the minute that you say your goals out loud, it makes them very real. And with that comes you opening up the door for all of your insecurities to just flood outside of you, right? Where you're like, at least for me, it feels like, but what if I fail? What if I say that I wanna do this and then what if I don't succeed at it? What if I say that this is my goal and then I don't reach it? What if I'm not as good as I think I am? Blah, 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 blah. All of the limiting beliefs that I have ever have wash over me and make me feel like I just wanna curl up into a little cocoon. That is what happens every single time I go to talk openly about my goals is like, I am so scared of other people seeing me fail. That is the mentality that I have lived with my entire life. I have lived with that what if I fail mentality my entire life and it scares the absolute crap out of me all the time. So this year, this year I am making a change in how I go about things and I am going to tell you all my goals and I am going to release myself of that, of those limiting beliefs, and I am just going to be vulnerable and authentic and take y'all along on the journey with me. I think the biggest issue with my mentality around goals is that I've always viewed goals as a destination when in fact goals should just be a guiding light. They should be like a compass for you. They should pull you in a direction. But the issue with seeing goals as a destination is that your entire self-worth becomes tied into whether or not you reach that destination. When in fact, the entire purpose of goals is to show you, put you on a direction, put you on a path towards things that really, really matter to you. And it's the 
process from where you are now to getting to that point, that process is where all the growth, where all the learning, where all of the passion and oomph comes from, right? You learn so much about yourself from point A to point Z. You don't learn about yourself by just showing up at point Z one day. That's not, that's not what this is all about. The whole purpose of having a goal and working towards reaching it is everything in between. And I've never thought about goals like that until this year. And the minute that I kind of reframed my mindset about that, it, it changed, it took a lot of the pressure off for me because the reality is that yes, I'm gonna tell you these five goals. And yes, they do matter a lot to me that I succeed at these goals. And I think that having goals is awesome. And I personally am extremely goal oriented. So I, function best when I have strong goals that I'm working towards, but this year is not all about succeeding at these goals. This year is about the journey and the things that I am going to learn about myself and the new skills that I am going to learn and everything that goes on in between the amount of self-love and self-respect and self-discipline that I am going to build during the process of reaching these goals, that is what this is about. And I am so excited for this year, guys. I am so excited. I cannot even like, it just like wants to pour out of me how excited I am for this year because I have never felt more focused. I have never felt more drive and more passion in my life for what I'm doing. And a lot of it has to do with discovering what my goals are in the first place. So when it came to figuring out what my goals were, I, it took me a minute, right? I had to re-script what I thought my goals were, not script for this video, but just when I, when it came to writing down my goals, I had to rethink my thought process on my goals three, four different times before I came up with a list that I was like this. I like this list, this list excites me. And I think it had a lot to do with coming out of the mental space that I was in, getting more clear headed, and also really becoming in touch and in tune with what, I, what I've discovered my life's passion is and what my purpose is. And that changed the direction of my goals greatly. So I'm gonna go through kind of my thought process that got me to these goals, but I do wanna say that in order to figure out what your goals are, and it's important to be working towards the right goals because you can be working towards goals and putting in all of this effort and moving in all of these directions, but if you're not working towards the right goals that are in line with your values and in line with your principles, then what are you doing? So that took a lot of introspection for me to figure out what my goals were and whether or not they were in line with who I want to be. And that's the key is when you're figuring out what your goals are, you need to take a minute to really evaluate the person that you want to be. Really visualize and think about who you want to become by achieving these goals. And when you think about the person that you want to be, then you're going to think about, you're going to come up with goals that align with goals that that person would achieve. Okay, so think about yourself and think about who you are right now versus who you want to be. When, it, when you think about who you are now and who you want to be, your goals are everything that happens in between, okay? So that's what you gotta do. Think about the long term, think about who you wanna be, the person that you wanna be, how you wanna show up for the people in your life, what kind of work you want to do, what you want your family life to look like, what you want your relationship to look like, what you want your, your, your passion and your purpose to make you feel like. Think about all of those things. Come up with that person that makes you feel excited and then the goals will start coming to you. And let, I'll show you what I mean by that when I start reading off my goals. Goal number one in 2023 for me is I am not going to drink alcohol for the whole year, 12 whole months. Crazy, okay? So for anyone that knows me personally, they will know that alcohol has been honestly a pretty big part of my life since I started drinking. And I didn't start drinking till um, I dabbled a little my senior year of high school, but really until college. I've been drinking alcohol pretty heavily for eight, 
eight years, eight years. And honestly, I haven't always had the healthiest relationship with alcohol. I wouldn't say that I, I, I don't go as far as to say that I've had a problem with alcohol in the past, but I just think my relationship with it has not always been healthy. And there was something about when I did Whole30 in January, which if you haven't watched my Whole30 videos, highly recommend you do. I talk a lot about my relationship with alcohol in those videos, but when I stopped drinking for those 30 days and had like an assortment of social activities going on within those 30 days, there was something inside of me that just clicked and said, Maddie, the way that you feel after hanging out with your friends and doing all these social activities without drinking is so good and you just feel so clear headed and you feel so in control of yourself and you feel so good the next day. There was a light bulb that went off in me that just said, this is how life is supposed to feel. This is what it's supposed to feel like to genuinely love what you're doing, love the people you're surrounded with and feel good in your own skin. So I did a lot of like introspection when it came to my relationship with alcohol. And I have come to the conclusion that I drank Oftentimes I drink, especially to the degree to which I drink, because it made, it gave me self-confidence and it loosened me up and made me not feel so, I wouldn't say that I have social anxiety at all, but it made me much more comfortable in social settings. And it, it quickly became a part of my identity in college. I was you know, the girl that was always at every event, always at every party, that was always down to do A, B, C, and D, that liked to stay late for the after parties. Like that became my identity in college. And it made me really feel like I belonged, which sounds sad when you say it out loud, but it's the reality of my situation, right? Like I explained when I was in high school and stuff, I didn't have friends really. I really, I never had a friend group. I rarely had someone that I would consider my like best friend. I didn't really have that. So when I got to college and drinking was such a part of the culture and it really made me feel like I fit in uh, into the party scene and with my party friends and da 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 da. It became like a comfort zone for me and that can get out of hand rather quickly when it comes to the college scene. And I did chill out a lot after college ended, thank God. But I also still found myself leaning on alcohol a lot when it came to my emotional state and just social socializing in general, right? So when I would feel upset, it was really, really easy for me to pop open a bottle of wine. Or when I had a really, really stressful day at work, I would spend three hours on my couch watching mindless TV, drinking wine. And then when it came to socializing, like most of my weekends were spent waiting for the nighttime to roll around so I could go out and party and then spending my days feeling like shit because I just spent the night before partying. So, not to say there's anything wrong with any of that. And if that's what you like to do, then that's cool. I just felt like once I got a break from it for those 30 days during Whole30, I was like, hold up, <laughs> hold on. I am dealing with emotional things with a really clear headspace for the first time in like my whole adult life. And it was a really, really strong and empowering feeling to just feel like I was in control of my emotions, control of the situation, control of my reactions, because I was dealing with things in a really clear headspace. And I loved that. And then also, this was the craziest thing to me because I don't know why it never even occurred to me before, but you know that old, like everyone talks about how short the weekends are, like, oh, I just worked all week and then the weekend flew by. Okay, well, craziest thing happened. When I stopped drinking and I didn't spend half of my weekend feeling like crap or half of my weekend just waiting for the nighttime for my plans to happen or half of the weekend you know, drinking to the point where things get a little fuzzy. When I wasn't doing that anymore, my weekends felt 
way longer. I was getting so many things done on the weekend. I was getting so many things done during the day into the night and it was awesome. I just felt really, really free during those 30 days during Whole30. And when it was coming to an end, I was just like, I don't want this to end. I feel so good. I really, really like the choices that I've been making. I really, really like the type of activities that I've been doing. I really, really like the way that my life is feeling right now. And so I have decided to take a year long break from alcohol. I am not sober. I am not working a program. It is nothing like that. It is just a behavioral habitual change that I am making in my life for the next 12 months. And I am going to evaluate and see how I feel when it's all over. Goal number two for 2023 is one that I have been super reluctant to talk about, super reluctant to put a lot of emphasis on, and super reluctant to tell people that are really close to me in my life about. And it's the fact that I am going to take YouTube very seriously in 2023. I think I've been so reluctant to be honest about how much I love this and how seriously I want to take this because what if it doesn't happen for me, right? That's the thought process that goes on in my head. And it, when you think, when you have limiting beliefs like that, and I'm working through all of those right now, very intensely with myself to get over those thought processes. But when you think like that about yourself, it can become very easy to downplay your dreams, right? I was so guilty of saying, well, I'm going to do it. But like, if something happens, then it happens. And if not, then like, it's okay. Y'all. I love doing this. I genuinely love making these videos. I love sharing my thoughts and my ideas and hearing from y'all and building this community. And it's not okay if nothing comes of this. That's gonna really suck. So no, this year I am taking YouTube extremely seriously. I want this to turn into a career for me. I want to build this brand bigger than just YouTube. I want to build a community. I want to coach. I want to help people do all of these things to change their life as I am changing mine right now. And all of that starts with taking this channel very, very seriously in 2023. And in order for me to grow this channel and reach as many of you as possible, that means I have to be consistent across all platforms. I have to be consistent in making these long form videos for YouTube, making shorts, making TikToks, being active on Instagram. I have to be consistent and I have to really build an audience and build a community and find all of you that are on the same journey with me and that's gonna be a big change for me. You know, that's gonna be something that I really have to dedicate myself to and making these this content as good as possible and learning how to make these videos as high quality as possible and bring you content that you really wanna hear about and that I'm passionate about sharing. All of these things are so exciting to me. I am so excited to embark on taking YouTube seriously this year because it's the only thing that I've been this passionate about maybe ever. And you know, part of that is getting monetized this year. Currently, let's see. Currently I have, I have 41 subscribers. I have 41 subscriber and 75 total watch hours. So needless to say, as I am making this video right now, I have quite a ways to go. And that's so exciting. That's such a fun goal to work towards. And I'm really, really excited to get there. And I'm excited to learn so much on the process of getting there. And I am just excited to turn this passion project of mine, what started off as a passion project of mine to turn it into a brand that I feel like can truly help people. Because I know that the way that I felt when I started doing this, I am not alone in feeling that way. And I really truly feel that my purpose is to help people to not feel the way that I feel or to stop feeling the way that I felt. And if I can help make health, wellness and personal development mainstream and accessible, then I will have succeeded at my ultimate goal. Okay. So 
taking YouTube seriously this year. And I want all of you, my subscribers, to hold me true to this. I want for you to join me on all of my other platforms. That includes liking and subscribing to my channel, following me on Instagram, following me on TikTok, staying up to date on my journey, joining my community, and really being a part of it. This is something that means so much to me. And I really, really want as many of you as possible to join me on this journey. Goal number three. So when I first wrote out my list of goals, um, goal number three was different. Goal number three was buying a house this year. And, you know, I really had to do some soul searching on this one because one, buying a house is a huge commitment and it does tie you down to a location. I'm talking about buying a house for me to live in, for me to no longer rent. Um, and honestly, buying a house felt like the right thing to do because it's what everyone was screaming at me was the right thing to do. You're throwing away so much money in rent. Why do you keep renting? But I think the reality of it was, was I am not ready to buy a house because I am not ready to be tied down to Atlanta, Georgia. I, this year, have decided that when opportunities arise that I am excited about, I am going to take them. I am going to deep dive into them. So, this year, um, all of my friends are leaving Atlanta, quite literally all of them, except for two, are gonna be leaving Atlanta. And I have decided that I too, I'm going to move this year. So I have a, well, my absolute best friend lives in Austin, Texas. She just recently moved there. And I have decided that I am going to move out there with her. And I am going to experience what it's like to live in a new city in a good headspace and be excited about, you know, the work that I'm doing and the path that I'm on. And I am going to have that life experience. I have moved once in my life. I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina for just under a year. And honestly, I don't feel like I did that move right. I was not in a good headspace when I left for that move. And I got into a relationship really, really fast when I was out there and it ended up being terrible. And I just never really made new friends when I was out there because I was just concerned consumed in this relationship and I just didn't do moving the right way. So I want to do moving the right way this time. I want to really try and meet new people. I want to really experience the city that I'm in. I want to just really, I don't want to reinvent myself, but I want to go to a new city and really embrace this new headspace and new passion and purpose that I have in my life and see where it takes me. So I'm going to move this year. Piggybacking off of me wanting to move, um, I do sell real estate. Um, and obviously real estate is a career that keeps you very, very tied to one location. Once you start building, um, a network in a city, it becomes very hard to leave because your entire business is built off of that network. And honestly, it's been the biggest turnoff about the career to me. Um, I don't like feeling stuck somewhere and real estate honestly makes me feel very stuck. And I have felt that way pretty soon after I started doing it, but I do really enjoy the sales aspect of it. So Originally, my goal number four was to really dive into my real estate career and sell a million dollars worth of real estate this year. And I do think that that's a great goal for a real estate agent, but I do not want to be a real estate agent. That is something that I have come to terms with. And it was hard for me to admit that I did not want to be a real estate agent because it felt like I was giving up or like I had failed at it. But the reality of it is, is that it just wasn't in line with what my life's purpose and passion is. And that's okay. I tried something. I tried something new. I didn't like it. I figured out what I didn't like about it. And that pushed me in the direction of what I do love. So goal number four, I want to find a job in the health and wellness space. Okay. I want to find a corporate job that brings me that sense of security and ties into those operations and strategy strengths that I found in the job that I spoke about earlier that ties in with those strengths, but I want it to be in the health and wellness space. And I want it to be in the health and wellness space because 
I want everything that I do in my life this year to all be gearing towards my life's purpose and passion. And that is to make health, wellness, and personal development mainstream and accessible. And if I can have my, if I can have my nine to five job pushing me in that direction, if I can have my YouTube job pushing me in that direction, if I can have my habits pushing me in that direction, if I have my whole life channeled in that direction, that is like insane to me. That is gonna be so much energy just compounding in that direction. And I think it is going to breathe so much life into me and make me so happy that it's so exciting. <laughs> it is so exciting to me. So I am going to get a job in the health and wellness space this year. And that means that I am having to do a lot of work to land my dream job. I have not job hunted in a long time. I have had to revamp my resume. I have had to meet with a mentor to deep dive into my resume and what I'm looking for in a job. I have had to watch so many YouTube videos on resume writing and cover letter writing. I have had to watch so many YouTube videos on LinkedIn networking and creating a good LinkedIn profile. I have had to network with people on LinkedIn. I have had to find the jobs that I want to apply for, make sure that I have everything together for them. and. So now all of these applications and the reality of the situation is that I'm probably going to get a lot of no's. I'm going to get a lot of rejection throughout this process, but I want this. I really, really, really feel like it is what I am meant to be doing. So while this is going to require so much work and probably come with a lot of rejection, I'm going to keep going because it was like a light bulb went off for me when I was like there have, ugh, this past like couple years, I just have had no idea what I truly wanted to do work wise. And it was like, it all just clicked for me. I want to do YouTube. I want to turn this into a career. And in the meantime, and possibly even continuing on, maybe doing both. I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to hold, but I want my, my corporate life, I want my nine to five job, my stability job, I want that to also be in the space that I'm building this career in, health and wellness. It's what I'm passionate about. It's the purpose that I want to bring to this world. And that is what led me to goal number four. So new job, goal number four. Okay, goal number five. <laughs> The other goals on my list, I have really started to work through a lot of the limiting beliefs that I have built around those and kind of really deep diving into the thought process that makes me feel like in the past I haven't been able to accomplish those goals. And goal number five, goal number five, I think is going to be the most challenging goal for me this year because it is a mind body challenge and this year, I want to run the 2023 New York City Marathon. <laughs> this is a really big thing for me to admit because when I, the minute that I say it out loud, I'm just like, oh my God, I just said that. Like people are going to be holding me accountable. Someone other than myself is going to know that this is in my mind and something that I want to do. And ah, that's really scary because it is something that I have to train for every single day. I don't have to run every single day, but I have, I have plans in place for how I plan to get to this point. And you know, in my head, when I say it out loud, I'm like my whole life, I've told myself, you're not a runner. You're slow. You've never been good at cardio. You hate cardio. Oh my gosh. Remember when you were in sports and you had to do warm ups and like, you couldn't breathe afterwards, all of those things like come into my head and it's like, no, Maddie, like the thing that I love about making the marathon my goal is that to me, completing a marathon is not about, oh, I can run a marathon. I can run 26.2 miles. That's not what it is for me. For me, it's about I was mentally strong enough. I had enough mental willpower to just keep going. I had enough oomph within me. I had enough drive within me to wake up every single day and do the training that I needed to do for the months leading up to this. And I had the power and drive within me to wake up that morning, put on my shoes, go out to the start line 
and not stop for 26.2 miles, no matter how bad I hurt, no matter how much I wanted to cry, no matter how much my lungs felt like they were going to explode, I did the work and I reached the finish line. That is what running a marathon is about for me. It is so much more than the act of running. And it's really excites me because I feel like completing a marathon, when I complete a, this marathon, I feel like I am going to one, probably cry, and two, I am going to actually sit there and have a moment with myself where I am just like, I can do anything that I say I wanna do. That is what's exciting to me about completing a marathon and the New York City Marathon. I mean, there's no marathon bigger than that in my mind. What do I know about marathons? But in my head, that's the biggest one. And um, in spring, they come out with the charities that you can run under that you have to raise money for. And that is how I am hoping to get my ticket. It's very, very competitive to get a ticket for the New York City Marathon. So my hope is that I will be able to run for charity and raise money. So all of y'all be on the lookout. If I'm able to get under a charity, then we will all be raising money together to get me to the New York City Marathon, okay? So those are my five goals for 2023. And like I said, knowing what you want is the first step. Figuring out what your goals are and knowing that they align with what you want out of life and what you're drawn to, that is the first step. Do that first. Figure out what you're honest, if you're really, really honest with yourself, really dive deep into yourself and figure out what your goals are. That's step one. Then you've got to learn to love the process. Learn, fall in love with the process of reaching your goals. That is the whole point of having goals. Remember that goals are not a destination. They are a directional path. Goals are not a destination. They are a compass to point you, you point you and your life in a direction. That is the point of goals. Goals are not meant to be about crossing a finish line and getting to that and oh, I did it and now what? No, that's not the point. You're supposed to learn so much about yourself. You're supposed to learn so much about what you like, what you don't like, what you're made of, what kind of integrity you have. All of that is supposed to happen in the process of reaching your goals and that is what's so exciting about setting goals for yourself. Remember that setting goals for yourself, having a plan and sticking to it Keeping those promises to yourself is what breeds that self-love, that self-respect, and that self-discipline. And I am so excited, so excited to take you all on the journey with me in 2023 to reach these five goals. And I wanna hear what y'all's goals are for 2023. So in the comment section below, please leave me a comment and let me know what your goals are. And I wanna stick to them together. I want us all to reach our goals this year. I want us to all fall in love with the process this year. And I want us all to work to figure out what our passion and our purpose is, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me again today. As always, if you found this video helpful, informative, inspiring, anything under the sun, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on this journey that I'm on in 2023 to reach all of these goals. And like I said, I wanna hear from you in the comments below about your personal goals, okay? We are all on this journey together. It is all super exciting and we don't know what all can happen in a year. And that is the most exciting part. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you back next week.